Hey, MZ. I brought in somebody that matches your witty personality. So you hold tight for a few minutes, and we're going to be bringing on the Nurse Blake. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. This is about to be epic. Ciao. So we know he went from a nurse in the hospital to all of a sudden TikTok sensation. He was doing it all through just stress relief, and it took off. So we're going to bring him on here. And we're going to have a little chit chat about uh, coping and all the wonderful ways that we do it as uh, medical folk. Well, let's do the damn thing. Let's bring them in. All right. Hold tight. Hey, can you see me? I can. Perfect. How's it going? Great. Shock advised. I feel like my heart is about to pound Oh, out God, of get out of here. Ah! Get out of here. <laughs> I can't believe we're finally here and we get to talk to you today. I know. Hi, I'm so excited. Hi. This is How awesome. I got to say. I'm good. Thanks. MZ, I got to preface this. MZ has been dying like as soon as we knew because we've <laughs> had to like, you know, coordinate a couple times. We had some things that happened. You guys had some things happen and we finally got it. And I, I told her, I said, nothing is stopping this no it's great i love it where are you based out of so uh we are in texas okay yeah. um but have had the opportunity to kind of go around the world and actually that's where detox and i met was uh our last duty station in texas oh cool well listen if i'm coming to doing a show uh, near you guys, let me know and I'll get you guys tickets. Yeah, we talked to <sighs> Sheila and actually even better than that, I was asking her, I said, hey, um, is there any chance we could get tickets for our, our audience? And I, Yeah, and she, for sure. And she was like, yeah. And then she goes, we'll do better. She goes, you know, we'll send you guys too, which was super kind. And so we weren't looking for that, but we were excited anyway. We'll be there. We'll be the loud well, perfect. ones. Perfect. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. I can't wait to meet you both in person. So you're in New York, right? Um, yes, I am. Like, what day is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm in New York. Yeah, I'm in Rochester. Yeah, we were trying trying to check out uh, your schedule and see where you were going to be at. And holy smokes, it looks like you're on the road all over the place and can only begin to imagine like, what day is it? Yeah. I, New York and my yep. I know. I was just in Tennessee yesterday. Uh, I finally got vacation with my family for a few days. Um, oh, thank and goodness. I arrived in New York last night. Whew. Dang. So you got to see Brett then with two T's. Yeah. So uh, speaking of Brett with two T's, you will find out all about that during my show. I can't, uh, I can't give it away. Oh, but you open Pandora's box. Ah. Just... Oh, I know you'll have to, you'll have to hear all about the details and all about that drama at the show. <gasps> Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll leave it I'm going to make you save it. it. I, I want to tell you, but I can't. <laughs> do I need to shove somebody's head in a toilet? Cause I'll totally do it. <laughs> there we'll, we'll, um, yeah, we'll talk after the show. Understood. And then you'll hey. know all about Brett. Okay. Yeah. If you all don't know about Brett, um, Brett is my husband of six years. We've uh, been together for 12. Oh, awesome. So he was with me all through nursing school, getting into nursing. So that was a whole journey and experience, as, as you all know. But uh, yeah, I actually graduated in nursing in 2014. So I've been uh, in nursing nine years. Right? Yep. You're a I'm a real nurse, even though I'm from Florida. Uh, you're a baby uh, nurse. Blake. Oh, whatever. Get out of nine Florida years. Nurse. Still a real nurse. How, how many years? How many years? Nine. You I got 30. Okay. Okay, Florence Nightingale. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny. I was going to say uh, at the beginning of the show, for those who've been living under our rock, we've got Nurse Blake today, who is a regular modern day Florence Nightingale. Um, <laughs> we had the, you know, we all learned the lady with the lamp story early on. Um, Blake is kind of the same. I mean, I love your, your, was it the night shift rap? Oh my God. Oh, yeah. You do it all. You are the one man band published author, I mean, content creator, touring comedian, advocate, like you do it all. So Cruise planner. Oh yeah. The, planner. I totally forgot. Yeah. The conference. <laughs> Did it go yeah. good? I kind of forgot. Yeah, I do a lot, but I love yeah, it. I love every minute of it. But I think that's the, the beauty of nursing. Like 
you could do so many things even outside of the hospital mm-hmm. um, that if you just that if you just follow what you're really excited to do just like both of you in the podcast you know it's it's not easy but if you're super passionate about it then you could do it you just have to get the get on the ground running so yeah I, I balance a lot of different projects that I'm all super passionate about and you give back a lot. I'm oh, sorry. I say you give back a lot, don't you? I mean, I was looking at all your stuff and I'm like, dang. So, I mean, it's fun to do, but you you give back. And that's definitely the cool part. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I told MZ, I'm like, okay, listen. Because remember, I'm Florence Nightingale over here, right? So, <laughs> starstruck, whatever. I was like, he better not come on and be a dick. That's all I'm going to say. Like <laughs> no, I do try to give back whenever I can. And everything I do is, you know... Uh, because when I, you know, was a nurse working in the hospital where, when I was in nursing school, there were so many things that I needed as a nurse and as a nursing student that I didn't have access to, there weren't resources for. So whenever I can provide that back to my audience or my followers, I I love to do it. All like 3.2 million of them. Holy smokes. I don't, (laughs) I don't, I don't don't know. (laughs) I actually, I was thinking about this yesterday because someone recognized me on the plane and you know, I do get recognized often, but I never expect it. So when even says, it's like, oh my God, I know you. I like look around like, oh, me. Oh, <laughs> hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, so I don't even think about it anymore. I used to count back in the day, like how many followers I had and stuff. But then I quickly realized it's not about how many you have, but the quality of the followers yes. that you have, as opposed to just the number. I agree. Yeah, the, the quality of the content that you're putting out and, and the ripple effect of all the goodness it does in the world. And I'm kind of glad that you brought that up because uh, that's one thing that you, Blake, and Detox and I, we all have in common is we believe in comedy as therapy. Yes. Um, yes. Laughing, you know, keeps us from crying in a lot of situations. And especially working in the medical field, um, we come across a lot of icky sad just disturbing things and um it's kind of a dog eat dog world out there and nurses aren't particularly kind to one another there's a lot of just undermineness just blatant disregard for for you know one another so bullying mean girls (laughs) lateral violence yeah no you cannot have your pto no 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 and there's just so much crap out there. So I'm, I'm glad to see you in the seat that you're in right now because you're making a difference um, in such a positive way, putting good out there and just encouraging nurses to be good to one another and bring levity into the hospital, which is such a big deal after everything we've been through as a society, you know, COVID and just all the nonsense going on, you're part of a solution and it's awesome. No, thanks. You know, I went through the whole, you know, nurses eat their young that starts in nursing school, unfortunately, with the nursing professors, and it kind of is, is top down. So unfortunately, it trickles, you know, down to the nurses working as staff nurses or to the nursing students. So I believe like it's our generation to like call that BS out, you know, when you do see someone bullying someone else or, you know, causing drama, that's totally unnecessary, you just uh, call it out and have zero tolerance for it. But I I definitely think that humor is something that I have brought to my nursing practice, even with patients. You know, nursing is a serious profession, but our patients want those normal, regular human connections. So things like laughter and humor is definitely something that that I use to break the ice with patients and family or, you know, hell, even with coworkers, you know, how how, patients do. How did you, so, I mean, your intention wasn't to become this TikTok influencer. You were just kind of handling your own mental health, if I was reading things correctly. Is that right? Yeah. So I I never got into nursing school to be on stage or to do comedy <laughs> or Wait, to make videos. Like, that was never the intention. But the thug life found me. Okay? <laughs> it kind of, right, exactly. It kind of, like, just happened out of nowhere. I... I've been a nurse for about four years. So this was in 2017. Uh, I was working at ICU in Texas. Oh. I worked at the Texas Medical Center. So for the Harris Health System and Houston Methodist. Yep. And I was working in a very busy liver transplant intensive care unit. And I remember driving home one day and I had this feeling of impending doom. And I didn't know what it was, but it happened to be a panic attack. The first one I had ever had in my life. I was like, shit, like, I just need kind of 
I need an outlet. Like I felt like, oh, this is what burnout is. Like this is what it means. And it manifests itself in things like panic and anxiety and depression. And so I just like got my camera out and made a super stupid Facebook video that went viral. And on your first I, one? On my first one, yeah, it was a scrub romper. It was me dancing around in a scrub <laughs> onesie. Which, it's uh, super hot. With, thank Not you, hot. which Figs uh, copied that idea. They just re- launched their new onesie, but theirs is super ugly. I know mine would be so much cuter. <laughs> mine is so much cuter. Um, that is awesome. And yeah, and then nurses, you know, related to it. And what's so cool as I as I tour and do videos, like, Nurses all over, not only America, but nurses out of the country in Australia and Canada and Europe, like we all relate to the same thing. So you are never alone. Like everyone's like, oh, you know, when you do a show in Canada or wherever, they're like, do you have to change the material? And I'm like, actually not. Like we all go through it no matter where we live or work or how long we've, you know, been a nurse. It's true. Actually, when we started this podcast, we we came up with this idea our executive director planted a little seed in my head and said hey is there any podcasts out there that are for like military nurses and I was like and and if there were would you listen and I'm like well if it was sassy I would so here comes bullets to bedpans here we are right and it, up glory yeah and we did it from the complete (laughs) opposite way right on this podcast say what can I curse yeah. on this podcast? Okay, oh, we cool. encourage it. Okay, good. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> but that, okay. the, you know, when people are like, oh, I said, you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful. I mean, we do swear, we say gross things and all that stuff. I'm like, but the whole premise of the podcast was to be from our perspective as yep. nurse or as any medical person. So you understand our warped sense of humor. I mean, we've all done it. When you're <laughs> sitting at the table and I say something and all I get is six looks, I'm like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. It's not really that gross. I mean, they're like, yeah, it is. I'm like, oh, sorry. But so we get the, how you you wouldn't have blanked. You'd have been like, okay, pass some more food over. And so it, that is where the premise came from. And I'm telling you, we've just started. So I mean, the fact that we got you on was like amazing. And then believe it or not, we've got the other end of it. We just interviewed Florence Night uh, Florence Nightingale was <laughs> Back from the well, it's back the same, from the dead. It's the celebrity version, Loretta Sweat from Matt. Oh fun. Oh cool. Yeah, oh yeah. fun. That's awesome. So Very cool. We did both sides, right? And Very so cool. to be able to be humorous it's with intent right i mean they hear all this stuff and they look at us and think we're crazy i'm sure some of them want to commit us and and we're like whatever (laughs) but the military we we're military on top of that well we were military on top of it and that's a whole other layer so i mean you want to see dark humor combine a nurse and the military and it it just goes down from there (laughs) so i like i said i just got done uh, on a little vacation with my family And one of my cousins, Angie, who I love, shout out to her. She's been a nurse in the army for uh, coming up on 20 years now. Shout out, girl. Yeah, so she's awesome. So she's worked at all the major, you know, um, uh, military hospitals in D.C. Madigan, yeah. Walter Reed. Oh, yeah, Walter Um, Reed. She she was there. And so, um, yeah, so I always talk with her. We connect so well. And, yeah, her stories are even more crazy than the ones I've had. Yeah. yeah, so she's worked all over the world uh, in different roles as nurses for the military. So That's definitely awesome. shout out to all the service members out there. Heck yeah. Oh, thank you. Just out of my own curiosity, was that anything that you ever kicked around or considered? Yeah, I consider it now. I'm like, oh, that would be like so fun. Like I think. Because now it's safe. I should do it. Just go into the military. <laughs> right, exactly. I should just go into the military right now. I have I have like abs and biceps and like a bigger chest and calves. Oh, uh, like I let me tell and, you that yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of myths there. Let me tell you, <laughs> we we got our we got our chunky ones too. You know, don't worry about that. We I'm have, right here, detox. And not the chunky ones too. <laughs> oh my god, I bet. Oh my god, but no, I have considered it for sure. Maybe in my next life. There you go. Okay. We'll talk after this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so, so curious. Um, nurse con. Um, yeah. I got a little bit uh, of intel. And first, I got to get this out of the way. Is it true that there's a drag show at yes, NurseCon? 100%. Uh, oh, 
gosh. Definitely. <laughs> and not just like a regular drag show. Like we get drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race. So we oh, get the very is... famous, very talented drag queens on the cruise with us the whole time. Dang, so it's with where else are you going to get that? CMRPs, drag. <laughs> Wait, what do you guys call them? CMRPs? Oh, no, CEUs, CEUs. Yeah, what do you, yeah, yeah, CEUs, yeah, CNEs. CNEs, um, CME, CMEs, that's the other one CMEs. Too, you know. uh, yeah, so NurseCon is amazing. It's incredible. You are both invited if you want to join me on the ship. Let's go. When is it? Have a free room <gasps> on me if you all want to come. Blake. Out of Miami. Shock advised. Hey, wait, when is it? I'm going out. It's April, uh, let me give you the right dates. Uh, it's in April, so it's coming up out of Miami. Wait, 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 2024? Yep. <gasps> it's April. MZ. <laughs> oh, my, my, my uh, uh, April 19th through the 14th, we're going to Mexico. <gasps> Woo! Yeah. We're doing theme wow. nights. We'll have over 80 hours of c &Es. So even though it's super fun, we have about 28 educators that come on board. I have a full-time staff of three um, doctorates of nursing practice that run our education throughout the year and help plan it. So they're super talented and amazing. And I love everyone on the nurse kind of C team that puts it all together to make it happen. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Like it's, if someone were to ask me what I'm most proud about, it would be nurse kind of C. Yeah. Can retired nurses go? So, but... Absolutely. Okay. I'll come as yeah. the old wise one. <laughs> no, we, no, what's so cool about my comedy show and nurse kind of see is there are people from all different ages. So you have your nursing students that are 20 out there dancing, partying, laughing with retired nurses in their 80s. Heck so it's yeah. so cool the diverse range we have um, with the events that I do. This it's is really what special. I tell my kids. I'm like, I'm going to be the Nana that's in hot pink, hot pants. And Girl, you in ain't even that old. Huh? You're not even that old. Well, thank you. I, I'm a little older yeah. than you too. I'm just a lot so more sassy. About being in the military, uh, it's kind of like dog years. So for every one, it's really like seven. Yeah. Detox did what? 21. 30, right? Wow. It about like 30. 21. I'm I trying retired. to make you older. I'm yeah. If she could, she'd probably slap I, me through. I, I, I retired from, not retired, I graduated from nursing school in 94. Oh, okay. Were you alive then? She is, how yeah. old, how old was, were you? I was born 91. <laughs> you were three. And you, MZ? Come on, just say it. Were you a twinkle? I played the fifth. <laughs> you were I you. played the fifth. <laughs> I'm 32. You're babies. <laughs> babies, babies, babies. I don't know. I mean, back to NurseCon, though. I mean, I'm thinking about all of the training opportunities that were you know, not on the floor. And it's always death by PowerPoint. You're sitting there yeah. like, Jesus, make it in, pass me a Celsius. If I could do a line of Coke to keep myself up, I'd probably <laughs> you would. You could, you would. <laughs> exactly. And get through this crap, but yeah. who would say no to doing it on a cruise ship with cruise comedy, ship. levity, fun, a drink, like. With it, the that's drink, just there's like 3,500 nurses there. Um, it, it's pretty epic. And we do meetups and stuff on day one. So we definitely have our, Military service members meet up. Um, we have some uh, service people that are on our education team. So it's it's really, really cool. Hey. And our education goes all the way through um, like pharmacology courses for nurse practitioners. Very cool. So wow. we have a wide range. You know what we'll do? MZ, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come on board with, and we'll be the podcasters for the cruise. And then yeah. Blake will just bring over people. We'll interview them. Yeah, I think we'll probably, we're going to try to have a podcast set up. So if anyone does want to do a live podcast, you can. Nice. Most definitely. We'll put oh bullets of bedpans up there. We'll come up and be your, be your podcast. We're like, let's go. No bullets on board, sorry. No. <laughs> Just bedpans. All right. I'll bring the gun show myself. <laughs> there you go. Damn, girl. I wish I had that. <laughs> I got to work out. It's so hard to work out on the road and eat healthy and just be healthy in general. It's hard. Yeah. I'm going to be on the bus another three full months. Ugh. Um, so I do have a team with me. I have my merch coordinator, my assistant, who's my cousin. Um, I have my tour manager, production person, and the bus driver. Oh, that's not like too big. You've got puppies too, right? 
I have two Pitbull Husky mixes. I am a ranger. Yeah, they're so cute. They look like they're in the military. They're badass. I was gonna say, Did I they get to come with you? No. Oh. They're banned from the bus. They don't let them come on the banned bus. Banned from the bus? This is bullshit. I know, I know right? Jeez. Just I know. wrap them off here. We'll I just them. Oh, perfect. Do you guys have pets? Heck yeah. Oh, see, I have a dog. Awesome. I, we had two dogs. We just lost one of our dogs a couple Aww. years ago. She was 16. She she was my dog. That was great. And we have a dog and a cat still. Mm -hmm. She has yeah, some badass that. dogs too. What do you have? I've uh, got a fired service dog that's walking around here somewhere. Aww. And uh, another one. He gets a little um, jealous when I'm not paying attention to him. But I've got two Dobermans. Wait, There's what is a fired service dog? Why he a got fired? fired one, yeah. Because he's cute but dumb. Oh. But mine is too. Mine was actually a, a fired service dog. Well, actually, that's not true. Passed and was doing well, but got car sick. And so because the oh. dog, and so the I was working with the person and they're like, hey, do you want a dog? I'm like, that's a purebred. And they're like, yeah, but the dog like gets sick all the time and I can't drive with him. I make a great family dog. It's a poodle. And I said, I've, I've never poodle. had a standard poodle. I've never had one. Best dogs ever. Best dogs. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Great. I would have never in my million years picked one myself. I would have picked a Doby, a Shepherd, a something. Right. Yeah. And That's I, so military of both of you. <laughs> it's so... Like, We're so I sad, aren't would we? No. Yeah. I would just know that's the kind of dogs you would have. Typical. I, I had that before I even came in the military. Oh, really? Yeah. Funny. Uh, what branch girl. were you guys? Air Force. Air Force. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's hot. It's I mean, hot. we might be a little biased. That's hot. Kind of can be. That's my favorite movie ever, Top Gun. <gasps> Maverick for the oh, original. Yeah. But Maverick. I love Maverick so much. I could see it back to back to back to back. Okay, which, which so, one's the hottie one for you? The one with the mustache. I got to meet him in person. Oh, uh, wait, it's, wait, I see. Uh, this is how old I am. All I can think of is Goose. Wait, what's his son? Goose's son. It's what? Yeah, Goose's son. Yeah, but what's his call sign? Uh, I'm horrible with names. Oh, my like, God, I just worst. blanked out. Okay, wait. I I'm the worst, but he's so hot. I, I, I figured you'd go for him. Yeah, I love a mustache. Stern. So there's who is Rooster, that's Rooster. Yeah. yeah. God, that's horrible. Oh my Rooster. God. I should have Sorry. I was thinking. I was thinking what? cock. I, mean, we I have was the thinking whole... cock, but Rooster makes sense. I know. I think it's a lot of work. I yeah. commend both of you. It's a lot. It's not it, easy. Yeah, actually, yeah, it it is, but it's so much fun, and the it's people so you get to meet, and I'm, that's what I love. I love the stories. I love just hearing where they come from and and understanding them, and just. I've, we just met so many people. I mean, it's, it's just cool. great. When we did Loretta Sweat about passed out, I'm like, we we got her really. I it's mean, so cool. Uh, I love stuff like this. And whenever I get the chance to do, you know, things like this, uh, I do it. Like I was in, like I said, I was just in Knoxville with my family, and I had some extra merch. So on the way to the airport, I stopped by one of the emergency rooms and I'm just uh, like, hi, like I'm I'm Blake. I have some merch. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> So all the ER nurses came over. I had like 200 shirts or something. Um, so I just gave them to them, you know, oh, to pass around the hospital. So I love that. Yeah. I get a lot of people that take pictures outside my bus. And if I'm ever on the bus uh, and I see them, I try to photobomb them. So I like sneak behind them. Oh, that's like, so oh. good. See, that's the fun <laughs> stuff you get to do. That's why it's so fun. Like I always worry, mm -hmm. like when you see people that become celebrities and they get on a different kick, right? You're like, why it's so much yeah, why are fun like, especially like, comedians are so mean yeah. comedians are i'm like why are you mean why? like this should be fun yeah yeah so, should, so let me ask this question we get on track a little bit when you so that first one went viral was it straight up from there like i mean here you are just like i'm losing my freaking mind i need a stress relief i just had a panic attack although i'm gonna say <laughs> i'm like you had your first panic attack at that point i was in nursing school having my first panic <laughs> attack i was like that freaking code what <laughs> so it, did it go straight up like what happened from that first one and how did you, know, you manage it it was definitely a steady incline on the way up which i really appreciate it didn't go up like super fast yeah um it, it happened gradually over time which i really appreciate 
Um, I just kept making videos and then I would get invited to speak at like nursing conferences or visit nursing schools. So I did that for a few months to a year and I'm like, you know what? I could do like my own show. Like I want to be able to curse in my show. Like I don't want to have to say what nursing schools or hospitals tell me. (laughs) So in 2019, I did like five little shows. I sold tickets on Eventbrite and then I did 10 the next year and then 50 and now like 103 this year. Um, so, so it has, it has grown over time. How'd you find your team? I mean, if it's just you doing a TikTok, and then all of a sudden now we've got Sheila, by the way, she's amazing. And I really do like her. <laughs> she's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I do get to work with a lot of people, but when it comes to my phone and social media and videos, it's just me, it's my phone. So when people Instagram me, it's my same number I've had since in middle school, Oh, um, my wow. Orlando, my 407 yes. number. So people are like, and I try to respond. I can't respond to everything, but I do try. Um, so that's just me. But um, Nurse Con at Sea, uh, that, that team is seven full-time people and then 90 contractors. Holy uh, cow. That run throughout the year. So that's one of my main, we have an office in Orlando. And then when it comes to Nurse Blake, it's a lot of uh, different um, people working together on things like touring, right? Not yeah. like I'm seeing or here I'm in a hotel room by myself in Rochester. Like yeah. they're getting ready for the, my show. I'll go up at around four o'clock and do a mic check. But like when it comes to the book, right, I'm working with a book publisher. When it comes to my tour, I'm working with a tour manager who books it. So I'm not having people run to get me coffee or make me food or do my hair. It's, it's definitely, it's not like that it's at low all. low key. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When it's, I just kind of see it's cruise people. So, yeah. 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 I'm glad you brought up the book. I don't know if if uh, you two realize this, we've yeah. got two published authors Ooh. on the cast. Oh, Lord. So, which is super cool. Uh, Blake's book, I Want to Be a Nurse When I Grow Up. You can actually find it uh, on that. Amazon. Amazon. That's pretty yeah. awesome. It is super cute. We have our oh Christmas book coming out soon in October. It's Santa Goes to the ER. Um, so I'm super excited about that book. So that'll be out later it. this year. Very yeah, he's got cool. a He's got a shellfish allergy. Oh, so we so we teach kids about allergies in the book. That's very cool. That's super yeah. awesome. I like yeah. it. What I, what I love is that I'm able to do a show that's for adults. It's called Shock Advice because I right. do have a dirty mouth. And one one <laughs> someone complained about my show. They're like, "Your dirty mouth!" Like I was so shocked at what you were saying. And I'm like, "Girl, that's in the name." Like, I'm glad you were shocked because it's shock advised. And if you get offended in my show, you're not even a real nurse. Right. Because I don't say anything that no one's heard or said before. So it's like, you're not even real. Uh, But it's so cool that I could do a show for adults and yet sell my children's book. And those, the people that come are able to, you know, connect with their kids. Yeah. And educate them on what it's like, you know, as a nurse with my children's book. So it's really cool to be on both ends of the spectrum. I I can really appreciate how you've been able to uh, grow and evolve and just stay so humble through it all, but have such a wide outreach between nurse con, um, band for life. That was another big one. Um, that when I learned about was just super, I mean, touched by for those that don't know the band for life, that was, uh, that was huge. Yeah. I mean, that was what, 20, 2015, right? Blake? Yeah, I started Band for Life in 2013 when I was turned away from donating blood for being gay because the FDA, you know, don't ask, don't tell. A lot, well, of, people say, did, a lot of people didn't know that. I, I, I know. It's a very, actually, you know how I found out my, one of my best friends used to work for American Red Cross. I was helping her set up a okay. blood drive one day. This is years ago. And we heard, we, her and I were talking and then all of a sudden, I don't remember what she said, but then I looked at her, I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, if yeah. you're gay... You, you can't, can't donate. donate. And I went, you have got to be kidding me. Yeah. Bullshit. But- yeah. So I started that when I was in nursing school and we got the FDA to end the lifetime ban in 2015. Very cool. And it's evolved since then. So that project's been 10 years in the making, but that's when I really learned the power of social media and the yeah. power that we have, you know, to create change. A nursing student who is 21 from Orlando, you know, got the FDA to listen to him. Um, so that, so that's when I really learned the power that we have as healthcare workers to, to find things that need change and to fucking go out and change it and come together yeah. and do it. Don't be all right. this freaking catty exactly. shit. Like just yeah. get your head out of your ass and stop being yeah. all petty. No time for drama. No. Here. 
No, no, no. Just comedy. I mean, you want to laugh and yeah. joke, it's great. But, that you know, it, it's a great thing that you're showing, like, nursing students. All you nursing students out there, if you're whining about it, go do something about it. Because right there. <laughs> seriously. I mean, well, I mean, really. I mean, really. If you're – nursing is hard – nursing school isn't even the hardest you know (laughs) it's after you graduate and become a nurse so it's about kind of trying to find joy and enjoyment during those hard times yeah right it's still getting through them how are you going to get through a shitty day how are you going to get through a shitty nursing course you know um because nursing is all about learning you'll never be done nope so you're never going to be perfect all you nursing students out there you type a personalities who just want to be perfect I was one of those, you know, working in the ICU, thinking my shit don't stink. Mm-hmm. And you realize you don't know everything, but that's okay. It is. You learn you're not perfect. That's fine. But just and know, I say, you're going to have fall. confidence. Yeah, okay. Confidence is saying, I don't know something. Confidence isn't knowing everything. Confidence is like, bitch, I ain't never done that before. So you better fucking show me how to do it. Like, that's confidence. <laughs> yeah. And no. it's knowing you're going to fuck up. Like when I, I, I've told nurses across the board, I'm like, if you meet a nurse that says like, I've never made a mistake, she ain't you're a nurse. She's full of shit. She's lying. She's yeah. lying. And I don't trust her. Yeah. No. I, that I, actually reminds me of a story that you tell Blake about, was it the the poop tube? I don't know the, the official term. I should. The flexi seal, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. This nurse. So the patient pulls out her flexi seal, which is a poop tube. And then swings all over the room. There's shit everywhere. Oh. I'm a patient care tech at this time because I was in nursing school. And I'm like, oh, shit. There's shit <laughs> Literally. <like> everywhere. <laughs> Shit's flying. So flying everywhere. So I tell the nurse, I was like, hey, like your patient, there's shit. There's shit. Poop tubes out. Da, 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 da. And so she went in and replaced it. But I'm looking at the bag and there's no output. Like, where's the poop? So she went in, checked on it. She had put the flexi seal. In. in the front hole <laughs> instead of the back <laughs> hole. Shine. And I'm like, who does that? But she probably thought she's perfect. And, and that was and your preceptor, everything. right? Like- uh, that was, yeah. Oh, I know. That's awesome. It's not good. I, had I know. A, I had a resident one time, this was, even to this day, God, if she's listening, I know she'll be giggling and rolling her eyes. That patient, I worked labor and delivery a lot of years, and the patient needed an IUPC, right? It measures yes. the strength of the contra- contractions. Yep. And the lady had an epidural, critical point in this. And she's kind of looking at her, and she's putting her hands there. And going to slide the IUPC in. So she does it. And I go over to the machine. And I'm like, it's not reading right. And I'm like, oh. Because I saw her eyes not looking down. I saw her talking to the patient. And I'm like, I hope she did it. And I go look over. And she <laughs> shoved it up her rectum, right up the ass. <laughs> but the patient didn't know because she had an epidural. Oh, epidural. So she had <laughs> so, no idea. So she's Jesus. like, and I am, because I put the nurse face on. I'm like, okay. I don't say a word, right? And I look over at her. And she goes, have another one and i'm like um yeah no problem like that i'm just smirking the whole time right so she goes and she goes this one's not reading right we're gonna replace it so she puts it in properly and we leave the room and i am just busting a guy she's like don't say a word i'm like your roast is coming up right it's all that right yeah 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 (laughs) it's gonna be it's in the podcast now (laughs) it's going down (laughs) oh my god i laughed so hard she was like i'm so embarrassed and i was like next time look down (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, that's so funny. It is. So, yeah. all right. So, here's my other question. I was yeah. thinking of things that you've done. You you have your own line of okay. They're they're not Crocs, right? They're uh, <laughs> not no, Crocs. They're, Gales. they're not Crocs, but they are the most comfortable. They should be called not sure. Crocs. That's what they, <laughs> they the are. That, that is a tagline. Not Crocs. Yeah, <laughs> not Crocs. It's a tagline. Um, with Gales. So it's not my company, but I did help them invent, uh, design this shoe. Oh, hi. Um, I chose out the color scheme and everything, but it is super comfortable. Um, I, I get that question. Probably the most asked question I get online for years is what shoes do you wear? And weird? I've never had, I get the weird, like number one, I guess so many nurses have foot problems and back problems. Yeah. And well, obviously, and I just never know because I just wear whatever, you know, historically, I've tried a few like nurse shoes in the past, but they're ugly or they suck and they're not really comfortable. And did you wear them way too narrow? Did you wear those thick white ones? Do you ever see? Oh, with like the, um, the dance goes. 
Okay, so let me just tell you a story. There, there is shoes should not be completely quiet, and here's why. <laughs> <laughs> he already knows where I'm going. <laughs> I'm nursing school. Yes, we wore those damn dance skins. We had the white leggings that didn't let the blood uh. circulate down to your feet. Right, we had to wear white like. Well, it was either dress pants or the skorts. I wore those skort things, right? Girl, you are old. You went to I nursing school you, back in the back day. Back in the day, right? So, so I am working a shift, and I'm working on a step down cardiac unit, right? We took post post cath and post bypass, right? And I'm walking down the hall, and I needed to go check on patients. And remember, our population's like mostly 60s, 70s, 80 years old. And you walk in the room, and my shoes are dead quiet. Like, I am stealth mode. And I walk in the room, and this sheet's just a flying. And this 70-year-old man's whacking off. And so he didn't see me. Uh... (laughs) He didn't see me. Because I just kind of seen like the sheet kind of, I was like, oh, snap. And I kind of backed off. And then I kind of made noise like I sung or coughed or something or whatever. And Give just me the Kleenex box, honey. <laughs> yeah, get the, yeah, where's the lotion? I need more lotion. <laughs> God, guys are so gross. Oh, my God. I was like, so your shoes shouldn't be stealth mode. They should make some level of noise. <laughs> Or just sing down the hall, right? Safety. Oh my God! Lesson right. Well, learned. Crocs are the worst. Crocs are the worst. Dance goes are awful. Yeah. I don't know how nurses. Well, I asked the nurse. I was like, "How long do your shoes take to break in?" And she's like, "Oh, like six months." Oh my God! I don't have six <laughs> months to break in dance goes. Are you kidding me? Hell no. I don't know what kind of shoes did you wear at work. Uh, let's see. I wore. So when I was nurse school, we had to wear those damn white dance coach shoes. But then when I was on my own, I we wore those like clog. I wore the clog type things, like okay. the Crocs yeah. without holes, right? Like I yeah. wore the clogs, and I they were really light. I still have my last pair, like light. They weighed nothing, like an ounce. And I, no. I, I, no, the I'm only hearing. problem with that though is when I was like in a crash C-section, which unfortunately happened a lot to me. I was like the master bed flyer. I'd run out of my shoes. So my friends would be like throwing the shoes in the OR at me. Like, oh, yeah. funny. <laughs> that was the only downfall. Otherwise, they were great. <laughs> Boots laced Boots. all the way. Boots. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's my out of the friend, hospital. Yeah. She came to Tennessee. She had her, her uniform on, those freaking boots. Yeah. Yep. Not yeah. so comfy. Well, yeah. and when you're deployed, I mean, that's I well. that's what you're wearing. I mean, you're in, yeah. you, you don't have all that cushiness because. When things are happening, you're you're not changing. You're just running. I'm surprised that nurses in hospitals like Walter Reed have to wear full on like military uniform. I thought they could wear scrubs, but they are not. They're they not. Are that's full. army. That's an army air force. That's not like that. Army then. That's why. That's an army thing then. Yeah. yeah. When they deployed. Yeah, yeah. deployed. The most part, if they're in a field hospital setting, they're going to be uniform boots. Yeah. Um, just because it's a it's a safety issue, they're taking potentially gunfire mortars. Yeah, they got to be able to get up and go. Yeah, and wow. it depends where you are in a hospital too. I think clinic settings are all uniformed, but she's inpatient psych. She's uniformed. She was uni- I wonder Ooh. if it's a psych thing, like for a like a rank. Yeah. I wonder if it's that because a lot. Oh, of- she just got major. Oh, congratulations! Nice. Yeah, very good. very cool. That is awesome. Major Amy. Yeah. Congrats. Wow. Did you go to her promotion ceremony? I wish. I don't. I'm always working. So I was going to ask about that because when we were looking up your tour schedule, I was like, man, he is just go, 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 go. How are you filling your cup up right now? Oh, good question. It's empty. It's empty. (laughs) My coffee is empty. Is a macchiato? We need a top off. My coffee is empty. No, when I'm touring, like I... I'm just like focused on touring while I do other things. Like I do things like this. I have meetings for nurse kind of see, but I try not to do anything too emotional or like when I'm touring, I can't get into any. So like, for example, like growing up, my parents sent me to gay conversion therapy when I was like 15 to 18. So I have a lot of like trauma stored in my body that I was going to explore in therapy but then they're like, we're not going to crack that open until after your tour. Oh, my God. Because yeah. you're in a good head space yeah. right now. Um, and keep it that way. Keep it that way. Yeah, I definitely, I think my trip is, I 
compartmentalize it. Until well, after that's the medical. But see, it's obviously yeah. it didn't work very well, did it? Yeah. Oh, and the gay conversion therapy did not work. Yeah, not. Yeah, there you go. There's one. I learned some of my best things. tricks there because it's like thousands <laughs> of gay guys at a camp. You're like, like yay. Hello. You brought us send together. Me send me back. Send me back. <laughs> Let's go for round two. Yeah. It didn't quite back. work. Can we try that again? <laughs> yeah. It didn't, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, mom and dad. Holy crap. Um, yeah, so these are things that I talk about actually during my show. Yeah. Um, I talk a little bit about my family life and growing up. And my show is a mix of like stand up, but there's video and audio and visual elements. So it's super, um, it's super engaging. Nice. Uh, and it's just me up there for 90 minutes. When you're not, uh, when you're not doing all this, are you working units? What are you? Still <laughs> you think, you think a hospital will hire me with my mouth? <laughs> Calling them out? Absolutely no. not. My last hospital I worked at, the HR was on my ass, and I had to leave. Like I was like, I can't. They're not going to let me stay. For what uh, though? I keep doing what I'm doing, just posting on social media. Oh, I mean, these social media yeah. policies are so strict. Like, so you really, can't. that's so funny you say that because I actually I got I got kicked off a no I didn't get kicked off I got my hand slapped on a social media site. Um, because mm. I put a poll up about workplace violence, right? And oh, okay. and I wanted people to answer. And I did. I got like 90 answers before they actually found it. And then they're like, that's not funny. It's not a funny dark meme. Don't do it again. I was like, okay, sorry. So, but what was really interesting is that a couple of those people I had reached out to like, hey, you know, we're doing this thing on workplace violence. And I would love to know, like, would you be interested in you know, come in and talk about it. We can do it anonymous. Like, you know, I'm not there to yeah. sensationalize anything. And they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> no yeah, they can't. Like, so many oh can't speak up about issues. They will be fired, which is why I'm in a position where if I could be outspoken about things that other nurses can't talk about, then I'll do it. You know what I mean? Heck like, yeah. I'm going to say what everyone else can't say because unfortunately fear of losing their jobs. Yeah. Yeah, it, that, and that's a struggle for us to find people. It's not, I mean, people will come on, but I have to kind of give them a heads up like, hey, this is raw and real. Yeah. And, and I always tell people, it's like we're talking in the break room, not, not at a CEO right. conference. Like, yeah. this right, is real sure. shit. Yeah. yeah. So, what does the future look like? for you, Blake, do you, do you have any desire yeah. to go back to bedside or? That's always you, like, when I was just like in Tennessee with my family, just looking at the stars, you know, late at night, I'm like, I miss it. I miss number one. Cause that's why I got into nursing. Right. Cause with the patients, yeah. like I miss the camaraderie and the teamwork of a unit and, you know, just the rush of adrenaline and the mix of emotions. Like I love that. Yeah. I mostly have worked adult trauma. So I love the sound of an ambulance and being in that environment. So, cause I'm not in that environment. I do miss it. Now, while I know if I would go back, I'd be burnt out and be bitching about it, you know, mm -hmm. again. So I'm very lucky what I'm doing now. Uh, but that's always like a backup plan. Like if at any point I want to stop doing what I'm doing, um, I'm just going to go move to a little town in Colorado and, you know, work at a rural hospital and, and drink coffee and, you know, <laughs> look back at my life and, you know, spend yeah. time with my family. Um, but until then, you know, I'm so busy. Just the conference alone is a full-time job. Um, and just all these other projects I have. So it, it is something I keep back in my mind as a backup plan. And you're it's just amazing what all you've been able to accomplish though in your 32 years. I mean, you've done more than most people do in an entire lifetime. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just, it's amazing to me. Uh, you could easily say, yeah, once I'm done touring, I'm retiring, I'm checking out, I'm going off the grid, see y'all, never again, goodbye. And I mean, your work that you, the legacy that you've passed on is just amazing to me. Thanks. So well, I'm excited. You know, I tell when people ask where do I see myself five years, I have no idea. But that's what's so exciting to me is like I take opportunities as they come. I never would be here if I stuck to some sort of plan, a life plan. Right. You know, go back for your master's degree and then become a nurse practitioner and like, blah, 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 blah. Um, instead I'm always open to new, new journeys in my life. And I think that's what keeps it super interesting and fun. You bring a good spin to the career field. I mean, I, I said, I've been in our so long time and, and if I was doing it over again, um, 
I don't know if I would have become a nurse. And uh, part of the reason why I became a nurse was and not because I hate the career field. I actually really enjoyed being a nurse and doing what I did. And I, I got a lot of experiences that other people didn't get, especially being in the military. So I don't regret one bit about it. But um, if I was doing it over again and I was doing it with nursing, I would hope I'd have insight like you had because – you just made a comment about like, yeah, go back for your master's and all that. And I remember that same feeling. I'm like, why is it like this one path? Like you right. become a nurse practitioner or a nurse educator. And like, I've taught college before and my, my master's actually in sports science. And, okay. and uh, this school picked me up. There's a division one school and, and it was a kinesiology department. They're like, we want you to come teach with us. And I'm like, okay. And their nursing department wouldn't even look at me. I, I'm wow. like, I could teach all your, I can teach all your health ed. All of that basic right. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no problem. Nope. Right. They would nope because I didn't have that specific degree. And I'm all like, Lord. It's so annoying. It's, it's so outdated. Yes. And nurses, unfortunately, feel like they have to go back to school. Like they get burnt out at the bedside. And they're like, oh, I need to go back and become a nurse practitioner. No. Then they just become a burnt out nurse practitioner with student loans. And you have to really know what you want and don't put that pressure on yourself to follow that and why? The regular path. Yeah. And why? Like, why are you doing it? Yeah. You're doing it because you want to do it. But there's so many other jobs for nurses outside of hospitals um, that unfortunately people don't talk about, which is why I love to talk about it yes. uh, on Nurse Con at Sea or I do have a magazine. I forgot I have a magazine. That's right. I remember that too. You <laughs> I have do. a magazine. You oh choose. Oh you should choose to be printed I, right now. I think I signed up to get it actually because I wanted to check it out. I did. I think I subscribed to cool. it. Well, um, issue two will be coming out. We have like 30,000 subscribers already. Nice. Um, yeah, and we talk about stories like this and jobs that nurses can have, you know, outside of the regular, you know, bedside nurse role. And you know what? The, it's that skill set, right? So we have hard skills and soft skills, right? And right. so hard skills, put a foley in, start an IV, you know, we know how to do resuscitation, whatever. But soft skills are like, we got our shit together under pressure. Right. We can handle a lot of information coming in at the same time and synthesize it really quick and then know what we need to do. We, you know, we, we have all these skills that translate. We have to be articulate. You know, if we miscommunicate, we have to know how to read shitty handwriting <laughs> <laughs> yes. so we don't kill the patient. Right. All that stuff. Right. And, and we don't give credence to that, to those soft skills that allow yeah. us to do a lot of other things that a are lot of after a whole career, they're it's fun. Okay. My thing is right now they throw this work-life balance at people, work-life balance, work-life balance, work-life balance. And I've thought about like, why is that? Why is that thing? How do you get to there? And instead you should have a job that you love and a job that you like. Yeah. And then your life is going to balance itself out on its own. You, they say work-life balance because they're miserable at their job. Yeah. Right. They're trying to find outlet when your job is your life. Your life is your job. Find a job you love and like, and there are plenty of them out there in the nursing. Tons world. of them. You just have to not. Yeah, be if you're doing what you love, then it never will feel like work a day in your life. Right. Exactly. Like just, it. it's YOLO, right? You only got one shot. So. Right. That's it. That's it. Let's do it. So. We're gonna do you guys it. Okay. Like you're breaking nursing generational trauma. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I promised Sheila that we were not going to go over an hour. I was going to honor that. So Blake yeah, didn't yeah. get in trouble and stuff. So No, it's okay. I yeah, I won't get in trouble by Sheila. I'll get in trouble by the Courtyard Marriott because my checkout's at 2. Oh. Hey. <laughs> the hey. other restrictions. Okay. <laughs> Wait, 2 o'clock? That, see, that is celebrity status. Everybody else has a checkout at 11. I do get points. So I get status. I could really check out a lot later if I wanted to. Oh. But I said 2 o'clock. Uh, no. I um, have to go I have check for my show tonight. I'm excited. How are, you, great. how are you liking? How are you liking your tour? It's going well. It's so fun. No, the crowds are amazing. It's incredible. The response is awesome. I have the most fun, you know, out on stage with the crowd. Every show is a little different, um, just because the crowd's different, the venue, and just my interactions with the audience and stuff. But I'm loving it. I just did show like 32, so I have like 72 more to go. Oh my god! Yeah, my tour wraps up in December, so I have like seventy shows until then. Holy but then cow! It wraps up this year in December, and then I do Australia and New Zealand in February. Uh, holy I, tonight! I actually end at the Sydney Opera House <gasps> in February. Do you pinch yourself? 
Uh, there's moments where I, I'm just so busy. I don't get to like really think about it, but yeah. th this tour, now that I've toured last year and the year before, I'm really enjoying life on the road. Like I'm really taking it all in at any moment. It could all be gone, you know, for any different multitude of reasons. Um, and, and I'm just super lucky. So yes, I am taking it in That's for sure. Good. That's good. All right. Well, we better wind it down here. What do you got MZ? Anything, uh, any last thoughts here? Blake, all I can say is thank you. Uh, truly from the bottom of my heart, this has been a treat, something I've been looking <laughs> forward to for a long, long time. Ever since we were given the green light, I uh, just, so to see this come to fruition, you don't know what this mm -hmm. means. Um, I'm just so grateful to spend some time with you and hear about all the wonderful things you're doing for the nursing community um, and for nurses in the future too. So Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you so much both for your service and what you're doing. Congrats on the podcast. Like I said, I know it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but keep on doing it. And you have an open invite to the cruise. So connect with Sheila and we'll get you a room on the ship. And I will see you next month at my show. And then I'll see you again in April for Are we next month. No, no, we're November. 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 That's right. We'll be November, November. there. November. And then cool. big one more thank you to you and Sheila, because you guys uh, donated tickets that we get to raffle off to two people. So by the time this Perfect. podcast goes off, that we're going to make that announcement. And then, uh, um, yeah, somebody else gets to go enjoy your show. Yay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for everything. All it was right. nice to meet both of you. You too. You ah! have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. Blake is a uh, definitely a great person. I mean, there is nothing better than when you get the opportunity and somebody takes that time out. And you know how busy his schedule is. I mean, it's just straight out. And he's just the kind of soul. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to be the, you know, this is the generation of the, you know, nursing and hopefully medical in general that's, that's going to start doing this different because we have to. We have to. We are short staffed. They're, it's collapsing in on itself. And it's on all sides. Military is not meeting the recruit re retention. They're not meeting their recruiting uh, goals. The civilian world, every place I walk into, we're short staffed. We're sorry. They're tired. They're worn out. And there's got to be a change, right? And so hopefully it's people like Blake that are like, hey, we can do this better and different, you know, and they can bring some light to the world. And, and hopefully we still get nurses, uh, little girls and little boys that want to be nurses and doctors and rad techs and respiratory therapists and PT and all that stuff, you know, and, and do it in a much healthier way than what we've been doing it at. Amen. All right. So from all of us to all of you, have a great week. Peace out. Bye.